We begin with a student, Laremi Shum, who grew up in Tasmania, but who now examines fossils and skeletons at the University of New South Wales, trying to find out how our ancient mammals earned their living and who they really killed. Laremi. The aim of my research was to produce an illustrated anatomical atlas of the postcranium of the 15 million year old thylacine, Nimbacinus dixoni. The postcrania refers to all parts of the skeleton except for the skull. Once I had described this species, I then compared it to Thylacinus cynocephalus, the Tasmanian tiger. Nimbacinus was known from Bullock Creek Northern Territory and the Riverslay World Heritage Area, northwest Queensland. It was approximately the size of a fox. It is a member of the recently extinct family of marsupial carnivores called the Thylacinidae. Informally known as the Thylacines, they resembled wolves and were an example of convergent evolution where unrelated animals look similar because they had similar lifestyles. Thylacinus cynocephalus, the Tasmanian tiger, was confined to Tasmania in modern times and went extinct in 1936. The Tasmanian tiger was used as a scapegoat for sheep killings which were actually the victims of attacks by feral dogs. A bounty was placed on the Tasmanian tiger and cash was offered for any pelts surrendered to the Tasmanian government. At the turn of the last century, their populations crashed, probably partly due to a disease resembling canine distemper and hunting pressure. The last Tasmanian tiger perished one cold September night in Hobart's Bermuda's Zoo. I used to drive past the ruins of this zoo on my way to university when I was studying as an undergrad at the University of Tasmania. I have never seen a place so haunted by the loss of an animal. There is hardly a day in Tasmania when one does not see the image of the Tasmanian tiger. It is on the registration plates of vehicles. It is the company icon of Cascade Beer and it is on the state's coat of arms. Nimbacinus was an ancient relative of the Tasmanian tiger that lived in a temperate rainforest that used to cover most of Australia during a time when it was a much wetter place and when as many as five thylacine species lived side by side. The Tasmanian tiger itself originally ranged Australia-wide and was even found as far north as Papua New Guinea. Understanding how these extinctions happen may help us prevent extinction of other species. My research involved photographing all of the bones of Nimbacinus and Thylacinus. I put the photographs on a light box traced the bones and then used a stippling technique to depict shadow. I noticed differences between the anatomy of the two species which are described in anatomical terms. The humerus, which is the bone of the upper arm of Nimbacinus, was very robust and had prominent areas for the attachment of muscles. This was also reflected in the breastbone, which had a central ridge. The animals that it resembled greatest were the common wombat where the humerus was concerned and the sternum resembled that of a bandicoot more than other marsupials. The breastbone of the bandicoot was similar to that of a rabbit. This suggested that Nimbacinus had strong forearms and like these animals it may have been good at digging. It may have found its prey by digging it out of the forest floor. Thylacinus, on the other hand, had a more gracile humerus. It also had longer limbs. Thylacinus also lacked clavicles or collarbones, whereas Nimbacinus had prominent ones. The absence of a clavicle would have given the Tasmanian tiger a longer stride, but at the expense of strength. The forelimb was only attached to the body by muscle. These features are also seen in wolves and dogs. This suggests that the Tasmanian tiger was better adapted for running and pursued its prey, which are believed to have been small wallabies. From this information, I concluded that Nimbacinus was not just a miniature Tasmanian tiger. It was adapted for a completely different predatory lifestyle that involved the use of strong forelimbs to find and wrestle with prey. The Tasmanian tiger was larger, consuming larger and possibly faster moving prey, but it did this more in pursuit than grappling with it.
both species were able to coexist because they were eating different prey species. This happens in present-day Tasmania, where the Tasmanian devil eats and scavenges mainly wallabies and wombats. The tiger quoll consumes mainly birds and possums, and the eastern quoll eats mainly small mammals like rodents and invertebrates. Deforestation has meant that the tiger quoll, which does most of its hunting in trees, is becoming rarer. Likewise, it may be suggested that the drying of the climate during the Ice Ages caused the forests where Nimbacinus lived to disappear and this species was not able to adapt to the change. But Thylacinus persisted as it was better adapted to the changing environment. It moved into the grasslands and became a predator of kangaroos. Habitat change or loss is a large factor in the extinction of species something that occurs slowly under natural conditions of change, but which today is occurring rapidly as humans clear the land for agriculture, roads and housing. Laramie Shum producing an atlas of the bones of our ancient and modern marsupials. She's from the University of New South Wales.